Donai, how are you? Doing great. Thank you for asking, Maria. How are you doing, guys? Good, good, good. It's nice to see you. Hello, Terry. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Good to see you again. It's good to see you too. Uh, we have G Wong. Is that I said your name Hi. right? Oh, yeah, that's correct. Nice to Hi. meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for joining you. us. And then we Thank have you. here Danielle. Hello, Danielle. Yes, hi. Uh, I'll turn on my video later. I'm not, not in a condition right now. I just got home. <laughs> okay, okay. That's okay. Thank you so much for being Thank you. and joining us today. And then I know we have Doug there and I have Fireflies Sack, I think it's here. And Terry is here. So, okay. So I want to share with you a little bit about how this meeting goes and what is the dynamic that we have and a little bit of history of these wonderful global dinings. So um, as I shared before, I, I am located in Denver, Colorado. And um, these global dinings start here in Denver, Colorado about seven years ago. So we used to get together in restaurants in different restaurants and um, go to a restaurant from different countries and enjoy you know, the, the dining in person. And then when the pandemic happened, we took it online, virtual. So, so we start doing this. And then actually it was a wonderful thing because it took the global dining to be really, for, truly, truly a global experience because we connect with people from all over the world. And that is the beauty of the global chamber, you know, that you connect with people all over the world. So the global dining became really global then. Um, um, so the format that we use for this, uh, uh, for this virtual meeting is we go around, we introduce ourselves, only our name, we actually share where we are located because it's very important to see where we are located. And then we share what kind of food we are eating. Uh, we, uh, we're gonna give some time to, um, I believe two people are gonna share about some of the, uh, the culture of the, 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 um, the South Korean if, the dining. So then they, they share with us. And then after that, we are going to go to breakout rooms. When we go to breakout rooms, we do it sometimes two times, it depends on the time, and we have more closer connections and we, we keep the conversation going. So that is how this um, event goes. Um, the idea here is to have a, as you see, very relaxing and to connect with each other. Um, so I am going to start with myself. And then when you finish introducing yourself, um, and share what you're eating, please call somebody else. Okay, so um, my name is Maria Pandan. I am located in Denver, Colorado. I actually uh, having a barbecue um, that there is a restaurant closed. And so I have to ask my husband to one get me one of, I write for him what he gets me because they cook there. So he's gonna be coming at any time while we are in the meeting to bring my food because the restaurant is about 45 minutes from where I live. And it's, it's called Korean barbecue and it's fresh and it's good. So that is what I will, I will be eating today. So now I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call Donai. Oh, I am uh, Donai Montes. I, unfortunately, I'm very tied up with work and I didn't have time to buy my South Korean food. I do apologize for that. But since I love this gathering, I told Cesar, even though I won't have my food, I just want to join in. So I will be the one that already ate in the dinner <laughs> and is very happy to be with you. Sorry, guys. Where are you located? Thank you. Mexico City uh, right now. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of business with California or the US. Um, 
I will call Roberto. Are you available to be called, or should I said Millon? Okay, I think that's Millon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Donaji. Hi, uh, my name is Millon Hibbet. I am actually based in Washington D.C. D.M.V. area, so Maryland and Northern Virginia area. Uh, as of currently right now, I am actually traveling, so I am physically located in actually North Carolina, and then moving to further south tomorrow. But uh, um, I'm going to talk about uh, today um, South Korean side dishes. Um, which is called the panchan in uh, Korean language. And um, uh, I really wanted to show, you know, the one of the side dishes that I can actually make or eating. Uh, but since I am traveling, before I left, I actually made some kimchi at home and then took some pictures of that. And I'm gonna <laughs> share that during my presentation. But uh, thank you very much. I am uh, executive director of the Glo uh, Global Chamber BWI region, as well as um, I'm running an uh, international trade consulting firm, uh, focusing on companies in the US uh, and Asia. Very nice meeting you, all of you. Thank you, Mijong. Yeah, we can't wait to see your presentation. Do you wanna call someone? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Danielle? Mm -hmm. Hello. There we are. Hi, I'm Daniel Zaretsky. I'm home in New York, but uh, I'm the GC advisor for uh, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan. And uh, I've worked there many years, and I will probably be moving back there either by the end of this year or early next year. And uh, believe it or not, in that region of the world, I'm thousands and hundreds of thousands of Koreans. Uh, and so I eat a lot of Korean food over there as well. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And what are you eating tonight? Do you have any? Oh, I just ate. I had <laughs> from a hot buffet at Martin Williams. I don't know if you had Martin Williams. It's, it's a, uh, like a chain of uh, grocery stores. So I had, the, I guess you call generic American food. <laughs> That's really good. And nice to see you, Danielle. Thank you, Anne, I see you. Uh, did you wanna call someone? Oh, uh, let's see what we are doing now. Uh, we call Professor Roberto. So <clears throat> thank you so much. It's great to see everybody of you. <clears throat> so I'm going to be violating the South Korean code and say that tonight, uh, this, of course, everybody knows is not a brand, but uh, a promotion. <laughs> Pellegrino water. Huh? I stopped drinking wine as a good Italian many years ago. And then what we're going to have tonight is as soon as we're done is this. Oh, OK. And these are called farfalle. Farfalle means butterfly. Why? Is if you're not careful, your neighbor at the table will eat your pasta. So you have to be very careful what you do. And uh, of course, my name is Roberto Ansis, and uh, I've been, uh, I had a company and I worked with both Jong and Donahi and met Dr. Young. And we bring foreign companies to the US, but regarding South Korea, I have a bridge. Whenever we have a South Korean client to meet Ms. Mijong Hibbit, she is the guide to the, to the paradigm. Because I really believe that in, in global business, you got to observe and pay respect to the countries you're doing business with. So that's who I am. And let's see, let me call uh, Terry. Hello, I am Terry and I am in Texas, Terry in Texas. I um, am I'm not only a member, but I serve as uh, the deputy director of Global Chamber Austin. And um, I um, am now munching on uh, chips and salsa because I'm in Texas and I love Tex-Mex. <laughs> and so I eat Mexican food. I can eat it every day if I had my way. And I had it for lunch, and that's what I'm munching on tonight, too. Thank you, Terry, and nice to see you again. And you saw that Donna I was very happy when you say chips and salsa because she's from Mexico. 
I've learned how to make uh, make homemade roasted salsa now, and uh, so it is phenomenal. So. That's really good. Do you wanna call someone? <laughs> yes, let me call on. Um, is it Zach Fireflies? No, yes. take it back. Hey, Zach, are you there? Hello. I don't know. So it's connected. You want to call another name? Okay, I'll try. I'll try another. Uh, how about um, Wong Sok Young? Oh, how thank you, Terry. <laughs> Perfect pronunciation. So my name is Wong Sok Young. I'm stationed, I'm located in the Seoul, Korea. We are the you are, we are talking about the actually Korean cuisine today, and last night here in Korea this is the like just past the eight a.m. so early in the morning so I just ate very you know brief Korean traditional breakfast small rice with soup and side dishes including kimchi and last mm -hmm. night I enjoyed very famous Korean food called galbi with the soju drinking with friends. <laughs> so I used to working for Korean government side as a trade commissioner for more than 30 years. And uh, when I based in the LA, California, I met Doc and actually he initiated Global Chambers since we met, I think Doc will explain later. And later on the, I'm, trying to introduce some of the information regarding the Korean table manner, some food, and also some business opportunity for the food industries. So, so look forward to, you know, getting my presentation. So let me call uh, Victor. Thank you, Wanta. Victor Abu. Victor Abu, are you there? I always see your name there. Okay, I don't... Then Alexandra Scott. Hey, hi everyone. Um, I'm Alexandra Scott and I'm one of the other interns here at the Global Chamber. So I just okay. wanted to drop in, say, say hi. Um, and yeah, I'm currently, you know, born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona, um, currently studying international relations and Japanese at Pomona College in Claremont, California. Um, and yeah, I'm just happy to be a part of this wonderful group. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alexandra. Welcome. It's wonderful to see new people in the Global Chamber. And what a great thing for you to add student. This is a way, good way to learn. So good for you. And I'm happy that you're here. Thank you. Do you want to call someone in, the, in your screen? Uh, yeah, let's see. Sorry, I came in a little late. I'm not quite sure who's Okay, so it. Melanie, uh, Melanie hasn't got yet. Catherine hasn't got yet. Annie hasn't got yet. Uh, okay, Jiwon uh, hasn't got. Go ahead. Yeah, how about Melanie? Hey, everybody. Thanks. Uh, so I, I don't have any food in front of me. I'm going to beg my husband to make some soon. I came to watch the party, and I also got really excited when I saw um, so I have I, I have um, a, a client of mine, a speech client of mine is from Korea. He's also a dentist in New Jersey. So while I was getting teeth whitening from my client, he allowed me to put on Netflix and I found a show called Street Food Asia and they had a, uh, an episode on um, South Korea and it was called like Guangzhou Market and I watched really, really <laughs> delicious looking food. So I thought that maybe if I came to this meeting, I could live vicariously through you. <laughs> but I am in New York City and there's great Korean food around. Well, at least to me, there's Koreatown. I can walk to it and I love bibimbap. And I I, I haven't gotten into kimchi yet. I want to, but it's just, I, I don't know. I haven't gotten into it, but anything that, uh, is, uh, I don't know, and I love when you go to a Korean place and they give you a whole bunch of free dishes, you don't know what it is, but it's all delicious. So I'm jealous, uh, and they're probably gonna eat a salad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Melanie, nice to see you. Do you wanna call someone? Um, I think Jiwon Beck didn't go yet. You yeah. Thank you. Hi, Hello. it's so nice to meet you all. I am Jiwon Beck, also can go by Haley. 
Um, I graduated university from South Korea. Now I am based in Phoenix, Arizona since this April. Um, currently right now I'm in charge of managing the project as an intern for Global Chamber. Um, I actually prepared a PowerPoint presentation to introduce Korean culture, but I think it might take a little bit too long. So I wouldn't show you all the part, but the main part, especially I wanted to share was about the traditional food in Daegu, which is the city I was born in South Korea. Um, and for the next, I got um, this food with me, this processed Korean food. Um, I would like to share with you all my Korean processed food that I can easily find and buy in here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us today. And we can't wait for you to share with ask more about the food that you have. So do you wanna call someone? Okay, I can tell you, um, Doug hasn't got yet, uh, Catherine, uh, to Victor is here, he's available too. Uh, we have Zach. Oh, Catherine? Yeah, hi, Anyaseo. I mean, my name is Catherine. I am uh, in Phoenix. So, Juan, if you have time, we can get connected. I'm a lawyer here. Uh, I've been Global Chamber member for quite a few years, Doc, right? Uh, and I've met some of our uh, interns before, and we become forever friends, uh, connected on LinkedIn. Even she went back to South Korea when I was visiting, when I was visiting in 2019. I I met with uh, Minji as well, uh, if you still remember he, remember her. So I am here uh, in Arizona, uh, Phoenix. Um, I do immigration and also other cases, other uh, area of law. Uh, if you ever need anything um, related to, uh, if you have a legal, uh, this legal service need or demand, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, I'm more than happy to help. If my law firm cannot handle cases, I'm more than happy to connect you to the right places. Um, so I have quite comfortable network in Phoenix, in Arizona, in legal market. Thank you, Catherine. Thank and you I so speak much. Korean. And I speak Korean. <laughs> As you know. That's very helpful. That's very helpful. <laughs> So good to be bilingual. So uh, did you wanna call someone? We have Victor and we have Annie that they haven't got yet. And, and do you want, I will tap my cell phone here. You can reach, reach out to me, okay? Great, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Catherine, did you wanna call someone in the screen? No, I came late. So okay. I, oh, do you want, I already said I tapped there. I came late, so I'm so sorry, but I will be staying until end of this session. Okay, so let's go, go with Victor. Hey, Victor. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Hi. My name is Victor from Nigeria. Yes, and uh, I trade in commodities. I'm quite excited to be here and um, um, to connect with all these great people. Um, if you ever need any commodity from Nigeria, agro commodity, minerals, just just contact me and I'll help. I'll be your blog. Okay. Okay. Perfect. What are you eating tonight? What is what kind of oh. food are you eating? Oh, it's it's gone past twelve midnight in Nigeria, and um, so I'm not eating at this time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine that's fine it's too late well thank you victor uh yeah. we're gonna go with Anne. Okay. hello Anne. hi good morning everyone i apologize um it might be a little bit noisy where i am as i am traveling um i'm actually in the next um in the next few hours i'm going to be visiting a beautiful temple here in japan and we'll be verging on a wonderful buddhist traditional uh cuisine so I am originally from the Philippines. I am a new member of Global Chamber of Commerce. And I just, I am so passionate about meeting you all because first of all, I love food. I own a food tour company in Japan. I have almost 50 food tours in Japan. So if any of you come here, please let me know. Um, I don't have any Korean food because it's my first time joining and it's 
my breakfast, I'm eating some cream cheese with sesame seed um, bread. It's only 8.30 where I am. But I love bibimbap. I love tea. When I was pregnant with my first child, I probably ate Korean food every week. So she should def definitely have some Korean taste buds in her. And I'm so excited to meet all of you and to get to know you all. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you for joining us from Japan. And it's 8.30 a.m. there. So enjoy your breakfast. We're going to go with Sak. Sak, are you available? Hello? I have one question. I'm curious. How about Japan open? Is it open every, all the tourists? Or is it easy to get in? No? Uh, we're, not, we're not really open yet. So um, you can come here, but it's a little complicated. You can come here on business and student visa. And as a tourist, it's with selected travel uh, agents where you have to be on a guided tour pretty much the whole day. So it's oh, not okay. fun. Great. So yeah, we're gonna go. Fun. We're gonna go with Doc. Hello, Doc. Nice to see you. Doc, are you hey. there? I am Maria. Hi, and I want to thank Melanie because you reminded Melanie me that um, I went to Korea my first international trip 35 years ago to Seoul. But I actually three or four years bef before that, I had a Korean meal in Manhattan. Um, and that was my first exposure at a very famous rest restaurant that my, my best man at my wedding, I just got married, went to this Korean restaurant and it was an amazing meal, you know, to your point about all the different foods. And so I had a precursor to my trip to, to Japan. I'm not eating anything today, but I will say I love everything. I know Zach mentioned on Facebook, he's eating bibimbap. He got the last order of wherever he picked up his food, uh, but bulgogi, kalbi, every kind of kimchi. Uh, there's so many amazing different foods. I look forward to learning more today. Thank you, Dr. Yun, for, for your sharing. And also I look forward to hearing more about Daegu and other places. Mijong, probably Busan has some special food as well. Thank you, Doug. Okay, we are gonna go with Mijong. So uh, take the floor and then we're gonna go from there with Jong. And then actually I think Hali has something, but we're gonna start with you. Take the floor. Yeah, thank you, Maria. Can I can I share screen? Is, is it okay? Should, should be. Okay, let me try. He's, he's the one who makes everything happen for us. Here. Can you guys see it okay? It looks beautiful and very oishi. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, oishi, that's uh, Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong country, sorry. <laughs> so, oishi in Korean would be like a mashita. 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 Yeah, mashita. Uh, mashita. Very, uh, very tasteful, right? Yeah, mashita. very tasteful. Right, right. Uh, so, I guess you might have some experience, you know, when you go to a Korean restaurant, whether it's a barbecue or, you know, some other places, uh, you're very surprised to, to see this endless uh, small dishes being served by server. And um, those small plates, small dishes uh, are called um, uh, the banchan in uh, Korean. And that actually literally translates to the side dishes. And um, these are actually served before or at the same time the main, uh, main course is served. So I move to the next one. So this is like a typical scenery, you know, when you go to the barbecue place, you know, at the center, you have some uh, grill, uh, you can put a different kinds of meat and then grill, but around it, you know, you will see so many different kinds of these small uh, plates and small dishes. These are the uh, panchan that I wanted to talk about, right? So because it is served before, <coughs> excuse me, some people ask, um, whether they are appetizers or not, but they are not appetizers. So not like, you know, uh, appetizers in the US, the panchans are served for actually free of charge. And the uh, servers replenish them, you know, many times during the meal time. Um, I would say without limit, theoretically, but you know, uh, they are very, very generous, you know, to bring uh, uh, panchans when uh, these are not enough. And uh, you can enjoy many, many different kinds of small plates. 
Um, then uh, what are the typical banchans, right? Uh, there are traditional banchans that you can see at many Korean restaurants, but um, these days uh, we see a lot of very creative banchan made with new ingredients and uh, new uh, through new, you know, cooking techniques. So it's just endless varieties of banchans out there. And some examples are like uh, cucumber salad and uh, fried anchovies and bean sprout and, uh, you know, boiled uh, quail eggs and steamed eggplant, satayed wild mushrooms, and candied lotus root, right? And uh, different kinds of uh, kimchi, many different kimchi. They, uh, they are all side dishes. And each restaurant serves the different types of banchan, even though uh, there are some common banchans you see often, uh, which are mainly uh, vegetable, vegetable based. Then uh, how this banchan is or originated, you know, uh, uh, and there are many stories, but some say, you know, in old time Korea, you know, the common people couldn't afford the meat. Meat are very scarce and, you know, the expensive. And thus they cook food using more commonly grown um, and affordable ingredients, which are ve vegetables, right? And roots and herbs and, and things like that. And also it's often said that banchan originated in the times of Buddhism, Buddhist influence uh, uh, mm -hmm. during mid uh, three kingdom era in uh, South Korea. And uh, during that time, meat consumption was prohibited uh, based on uh, Buddhism philosophy and uh, Buddhism tradition. And um, another idea of a banchan actually dates back to uh, the times of really Korean royal uh, court cuisine. So where a, a meal was said to be 12 dishes um, and accompanied with rice and soup. So it's, it's, it's a quite uh, noble concept where, you know, you're treated with the main staple that is rice and then soup and then variety of 12 types of uh, dishes. Um, those are the kings Kings at that time were uh, treated, you know, the, by uh, the servers or servant. But regardless of its origin, banchan can consist of anywhere from two to 12 dishes, um, although cheaper restaurants serve fewer dishes and you know, uh, more expensive restaurants uh, provide a lot more different kinds of uh, side dishes. Um, now I, I want to talk about the most famous you know, Korean side dish that, that is kimchi. Um, I actually have grown up watching uh, people in neighbors uh, making kimchi together. So it was just not a uh, your only family affair, but it was really kind of like a community affair. So many households really chip in. They actually bought the cabbage and other ingredients together uh, to make a kimchi uh, before harsh winter comes. And um, they make it together at uh, one household and you know enjoy communication and then after things all, all over they distribute split the kimchi you know the evenly among them so it was a quite a, like a community type of one um, of course nowadays you know things have changed so much you can buy kimchi at any time all around the year at a stores and things like that so you don't see this you know communal kimchi making um, ceremonies um, uh, you know uh, anymore but um, anyhow um, I um, wanted to actually show the kimchi, so I actually made the before uh, kimchi uh, before I left uh, the trip. This trip, so just wanted to share a little bit of kimchi that I made at home. So, right here. So, how to make the kimchi is a uh, it's it's quite simple, and the uh, ingredients that go in making kimchi can uh, very uh, vary, but usually that includes uh, some combinations of vegetable, um, garlic, ginger, and chili pepper, and salt, and um, uh, typically like a fish sauce. Um, but if we want to make it really a vegetarian version, you can take out, you know, the sum of uh, ingredients out and then uh, completely just make it, you know, plant-based, uh, plant-based kimchi, right? And then the mix, those mix is pickled and fermented, which was originally a, a way to preserve the vegetables for harsh winter months um, in South Korea. 
And cabbage is the most common vegetable used to make kimchi, um, uh, but uh, carrots and radish and cucumber and scallions are also frequently used to uh, make kimchi. And there are hundreds and hundreds of kimchi recipes today uh, that vary depending on the region and the seasons in, uh, that they are produced. And it's, it, it is uh, very easy to make it. And it, it just it took uh, for me, um, uh, not even a, uh, a few hours, right? Uh, but actually it takes a little bit of a time. Uh, uh, you know, uh, first when you actually cut the cabbage, you have to uh, put the salt and then make sure it actually drains kind of like the water out. That takes a little bit of a time, but uh, mixing part and then everything is just, um, uh, it's, just it's a simple process. And it's a fermentation, therefore uh, it processes itself taking care of the flavor, right? So the uh, longer it is, you know, the uh, flavorful the kimchi you know, becomes. So, in my favorite dishes, there are so many uh, side dishes, but uh, I love something called the chun. That is a really thin, uh, savory pancake type of a thing made of seafood, sometimes greens and a salad. So uh, when you um, have a chance, uh, uh, I hope you can actually try something called the chun because that's my favorite. Um, I think a Korea, you know, cuisine is uh, by definition, it is really, really family style. And side dishes also really well represent the Korean style of sharing things and the sharing culture. So uh, Korean cuisine is to me is all about like a gathering and sharing of entrees and side dishes. And then uh, you serve the older, older people, elders first, and you know, uh, sharing small plates and all that type of hospitality. So, um, and just one company that uh, caught my attention actually uh, recently in this area, um, uh, the DMB area is, even though you know the side dishes, but you don't know the particular ones and you know, uh, you try and then later and you don't know how to make it and you don't know the name because there's so many and things like that. But this company in DMB area, uh, they, um, do uh, this side dish delivery, you know, the services. Uh, right now, I mean, they do have an app and they do have a, a website. Uh, so the, the company name is Meal For You, but um, you can go and then actually choose a different type of, you know, the panchans. And uh, right now the service areas are only a DMV area, but they are planned to actually expand it throughout the US. So therefore uh, there will be a more chance for, you know, the Americans to uh, enjoy side dishes and um, you know Korean cuisine uh, as well. So this is a short uh, presentation of my presentation. Um, and if you have any other questions about Korean side dishes or um, any you know Korean cuisine and culture, uh, just let me know. I'll be very happy to just to share um, share you know uh, my experience. So now, uh, Dr. Yoon. Thank you, Mignon. That, that was great. Uh, Mijang, it's perfect, you know, presentation. How about, you know, everybody's opinion on the presentation of Mijang? It's perfect. Love right? it. Wonderful. Love, Love it. it. We are, uh, we are, yeah, we are hungry. <laughs> get hungry. hungry. So let me, let me get my presentation material to share. Can you see me? See my presentation? Yes. Okay. So I'm the one so you and I'm based in Seoul. I'm also chair of that uh, IGIC, which is under the Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy. And I already served almost 30 years to promote trade and investment between Korea and other countries. Last mission to Los Angeles, Canada, uh, the, the California. So at that time, so I met Doug, and I'm, I'm also working on the opening the Seoul chapters of the global chambers. Today, I got the mission from the doc regarding you know, virtual dining for Korean food. So I just pre prepared some the information regarding the 
Korean table manner. And I just to show you the link later on, you can check, you know, some specific manners on the table. Normally, when you get some the invitation for the dinner in Korea, you can regard, okay, the other parties give, gave me the some trust trustworthiness and also is wish to conduct some business with you. Normally, you know, the lunch time in Korea is very short, just within one hour during the work. So normally, you know, dinner is the major meal in Korea. It's long, normally from the after work, starting from the six or six thirty or seven. Normally, seven to nine. But uh, uh, it's uh, first round. Sometimes uh, Korean guys are loving also drinking after dinner. That is second round. <laughs> so uh, it is common, you know. So normally in Korea, when I was in the United States, so mostly, you know, husband, wife getting together. But in Korea, normally not like that way. So especially for business, so man or woman flock together. So the Korean food, actually, I think for the Western, you know, Westerners uh, regard as some spicy and, you know, so I think you need to control the degree of the, some the hot peppers or gochujang, such a thing. Some the, in, so when you order, there is some various menu, medium, mild, medium, and hot. So you can, you know, choose. And also normally in Korea, uh, we are using the spoon and chopstick, so like Japan and Vietnam. So, so if you cannot handle the chopstick, uh, you cannot enjoy the side dishes, what the Mijong explained. So many different kinds of side di dishes and it's delicious and very sophisticated. So you, you cannot enjoy without chopsticks. So you need to learn, I recommend you need to learn how to use chopsticks, it's fun. Anyway, and there are several other menus. Normally, when you get some, you know, the gathering with elderly people, then normally the el elder people start the meal first, then you can follow. So that is the kind of some the manners in Korea. Let me show. So alcohol drinking was so very important in Korea for business, actually. I'm a good drinker. So, <laughs> so whenever you come to Korea, let me invite you to some drinking you know, places. Normally, you know, alcohol drinkings uh, is more getting you know, together and closer together for the relations, but there is always some manners. So normally, we respect elder elder people based on the neo Confucianism, you know. So, starting from the Li Dynasty, so we respect elderly people. So whenever you serve the elderly people, we need to fill, you know, the glass, you know, first. So, but until we finish that uh, drink, the glass, we, you cannot refill again. But in Japan or in China, it's different. So whenever there is some some little level of empty standard, you know the in Japan and Chinese uh, refilling, but in Korea, until you finish that uh, drink and empty, then you can refill. Okay, that is on a, another you know manners. So uh, and also toasting also very important in Korea. So it's kind of the symbolic, you know, meaning of that we are together or for your health. So normally, you know, after we drink empty glass all together and cheers, you do, but in Korea, we hire you. Normally we call we hire your means for you, for your health, for your wealth, for your business. We hire your means, F-O-R. So that is the great, you know, the opportunity to get together and, you know, these like, some more the same, you know, feeling. So let me show some the terminologies about Korean food. Already Mijong explained the side dishes, but the Hansik is the name of the Korean food. So Han means Korea, Sik means Sik means eating. So Hansik in general meaning the Korean food. So normally, you know, the in the centers, we our main, you know, dishes is rice. 
steamed rice, okay? And serve with a uh, lot of the side dishes and also one bowl of soup. That's a normal, normal, you know, the traditional hansik. So most dishes using the many veggies and small portions of meat with some ingredient cooked with ingredient like, as you can see on the right-hand side, so gochujang, the hot pepper sauce, and garlic. And so it is. it means that it's very, very healthy food. And also kimchi is fermented food. So normally Korean, especially for Korean women are very slim. So without that, you know, dieting that much. So, and also popular dishes already, uh, Melanie explained that uh, some street food and also uh, normally whenever the, you know, the foreign friends visit here, then we saw a bulgogi or galbi and bibimbap. Already, you know, the Melanie explained the, on the New York, uh, she enjoyed the bibimbap. And also Han Jung Sik is like a course for Korean food. So appetizer and several main dishes and dessert. This is course menu. It is called Han Jung Sik. So when you come to Korea, then we can invite you some several different kind of the Han Jung Sik. So each province has different, you know, taste, different style. So I think, you know, the Haley, you are going to explain uh, some food from Daegu. So one more, the important thing is that the beans. We are all the beans man and members of global chamber. So when I was with the COTRA, Korea Trade Investment Provision Agencies, and they organized the Seoul Food. That is that the fourth largest the international food exhibitions is just finished the last month in Korea. So this is the, the one of the major, uh, you know, the business opportunity. Whenever you come to Korea for this, you know, show, then you can enjoy. Uh, and Korea is importing like $27 billion every year, the food products from the overseas. It's huge, you know, that the markets in Korea and during the show, uh, the uh, like more than 1,600 companies are exhibiting, and also many you know foreign countries are participating, and more than 50,000 business visitors are attending this show. So, uh, and Kotra is organizing very different kind of that uh, services, and and they are focusing on the not only food, also food tech, and also they organizing business matchmaking. So I think you can enjoy the, some business opportunities whenever you come to Korea. Some other, you know, business information, you can get some the, you know, the how to do business in Korea through the Invest Korea and also some other business etiquettes. So in general, the cultural and some practice in Korea, you can, you know, check this kind of the, you know, website. So this is, uh, you know, brief, you know, presentation from me and uh, I hope Whatever you have some question, then let me know. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Wow, so important to know how to do business etiquette, especially because sometimes when you don't know, you can miss an opportunity. That's right. It's That's so right. important. It's very important. Mm. Yes, very, very important. Also, I love that I didn't know the respect that they have for elderly. That's wonderful. Love that tradition. Love it, love it. Uh, we're gonna have, uh, Holly, do you have something to share with us? Did you say that you're gonna share something or not? Oh uh, yeah, of course I. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, Before I go, I just wanna uh, say thank you so much, uh, both of you for taking the time to put a presentation. I know it takes time to put a presentation and uh, that was wonderful from both of you so far. Really appreciate it, thank you. Okay, go ahead, uh, Hali. Um, can you guys see this? Yes. Uh, okay, so today I'm going to introduce Daegu 
and briefly introduce Bryce Wood in Daegu. And I also um, had a research on the current trade situation in Daegu, but I, I'm gonna skip that. Um, first of all, Daegu is a city in North Gyeongsang province, South Korea. So it's, which is located in here. Um, so the humid subtropical climate of Daegu is kind of ideal for producing high quality apples. Those, so we nicknamed Daegu as an apple city. So, and Daegu is also known as textile city because it is popular and um, its population is 2,465,000 people are living in Daegu. Daegu is like the third largest urban agglomeration in Korea after Seoul and Busan. And it is also third largest official metropolitan area in the nation with over 2.5 million res residents. And they're the second largest city after Busan in the Yongnam region in southeastern Korean pen pen peninsula. So these are the symbol of Daegu. There are like four colors to pr produce Daegu. The, this is like, this means um, various colorful in color. This provides a young, bright, cool, colorful and vibrant city image to express a developing Daegu in various shapes. So colorful Daegu blue, green, pink and yellow. So the main part, I would um, first I would like to show you my three favorite food in Daegu from Daegu. First one is napjak mandu, is like a flat dumpling. Um, this is has on this is had this has incredibly mild flavor. This taste does have comes from um, putting starch noodles in the pot sticker shaping them into um, crescents and boiling them in the water and frying them and sprinkling them with a kind of soy sauce that has been made only in Daegu for the last 40 years. Um, secondly, yaki udon. Although um, many are familiar with the Japanese fried noodle dish called yaki soba, but yaki udon was originally developed in Daegu 30 years ago so in the summer, it was um, made by quickly frying Korean leek in hot fire. And in the winter, it was prepared with shrimp, squid, pork, and spinach, along with onions, cabbage, um, and pumpkin, even bean sprouts and tree year. So the noodles are also enjoyed with the basic ingredients of garlic and slightly spicy red pepper powder. So nowadays, this dish is in included on the menu of most Chinese restaurant in, in South Korea. And it also well known for the addictiveness of its spicy and sweet taste. And the third one called makchang gui is kind of like a grilled beef intestine. They are um, originating around the Daegu area in the early 1970s. Makchang gui is a dish made with beef tripe, tripe, the fourth stomach of cow. So it's grilled over a briquette or um, garnished with garlic, green onion, and as an especially made soybean paste. It is um, best served as side dish when, when we're drinking soju, the Korean traditional, traditional alcohol. Um, it is low in fat and high in protein, and it is especially good for helping um, younger people, like children, grow tall, as it's higher in calcium than beef. So these are my favorite food in Daegu. And also Daegu is really famous for its um, scrumptious specialties as an inland city. It has like more meat dishes than seafood with um, stir fried beef tribe and beef or pork in trails like makchang being especially popular. So in fact, you'll see stir fried beef tribe 
alleys all over the city when you travel to Daegu. So the seafood here is often seasoned with vinegar and other um, condiments or cooked as a stew to prepare sliced raw fish dishes. So I would like to introduce you guys about Daegu's many food themed streets. Um, first one called Pangoge seasoned raw fish alley. This is in Nedangdong, Seogu. Uh, they are specialized in seasoned raw fish, which is called Mutsimhe. They are one of the best dishes of Daegu. Seasoned raw fish is like a um, local dish for Daegu. So it's developed as an alternate to sliced raw fish. And it is kind of made by mixing boiled squid, stingray, and river snail with shred radish, um, along with condiments such as red pepper powder and garlic and ginger. Um, you can wrap these um, seasoned raw fish with flat dumplings, lettuce, and sea stem leaves. Its taste is like spicy and sweet and kind of chewy. Um, yeah, and it is served with yeah, these are really good. And second, this is Anjirang Stir Fried Beef Tribe Street. As I mentioned, um, this is located near the Anjirang Market in Taemyeongdong. Um, you can enjoy gopchang and beef or pork entrails, which is called makchang, as a reasonable price. Like more than 50 stir fried fried beef tribe restaurants are lined up on this like 500 meter long street. Um, next one, Seomun Night Market. Um, this is a famous food place in Daegu. The, the night market opens at 7 p.m. and offers a variety of local foods like fusion foods and street foods for its visitors and travelers. Um, and Salmon Market's most popular food is um, kalgaebi. This is like a um, compound word for kalguksu, which is noodle soup, and hand pulled dough soup, which is called sujebi. This is mixed, 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 um, mixed word. It is made by boiling the two dishes together. At Salmon Night Market, you can try a variety of unique dishes. So you can enjoy your night with creative options like grilled scallops with cheese or a hot plate, which is called Galbi Chalpan Cheese Gui, and grilled pork belly, which is called Samgyeopsal. This is my favorite. And cotton candy bubble tea. So this street just has a lot of things to see, such as busking and even um, break dancing too. For the last one, um, Pyeonghwa Market in Dongu has the only chicken gizzard alley in the country. It is also called um, uh, Dakdeokjip Alley, as Dakdeokjip is kind of a slang word for chicken gizzard. So this alley began to form in the early 1970s when a chicken but butcher deep fried chicken gizzard left from um, butchering and sold them cheaply to nearby work workers. So this sold here are deep fried in thin batter to give a chewy and savory texture. So you can choose from plain batter or spicy seasoned batter and salty soy sauce batter. So in addition with that, they serve popular chicken dishes such as roasted chicken that might be familiar with you, which is called tongdak in Korean and braised spicy chicken with vegetables, which is called jimdak and chicken feet, which is called um, dakbar. So these are the three that I wanted to share with you guys. Thank well, you. Thank you so much. Wow. I believe we are all hungry now. Okay, let's see if we can get back to everybody to see everybody's. We can see everybody. Let's see. Um, thank you, Cesar. Well, let's do this. Let's unmute ourselves and let's give a round of applause to these wonderful presenters. Luan, to Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'm super hungry. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful way to learn. Oh, my gosh. Well, we have only three minutes, and I really like to honor everybody's time. But before we close, I want to see if someone want to share what you guys learned, something that you didn't know before that you can you learn through this presentation. Who want to talk? Can I go? Yes, please. Yeah, so um, I was very interested in the manners for drinking like sake and other alcohol. As pointed out, um, it's so it's so under it's so interesting the contrast. Like in Japan, I you know we have to pour when the drink is getting like this much, but mm -hmm. in Korea it's actually the opposite. So I'm so thankful to learn that. <laughs> Next time I go drinking with my Korean friends, I'll make sure not to overpour. So thank you. Okay, very much. great, great. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good tip. Everybody have their own, you know, way to do things. So yeah, I I I found that really really uh, helpful. The whole business etiquette is so important. Uh, somebody else, we have a couple minutes. Somebody else want to share what? Okay, Doctor Robert. Yes, uh, I want to say that I'm totally impressed by the presentation. Uh, but also I'm confused because there is so much different kind of foods and I am vegan. I, uh, I, I, me and spices are totally hateful of each other. So I decided tonight after seeing this incredible presentation that anytime I'll go to a Korean, South Korean restaurant, I will call Mijon and I say, Mijon, what do you suggest I eat? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that's a good tip i will do the same i will do this professor says you heard a lot of meat-based dishes today but the south korean dishes are very famous for vegetable-based you know dishes so there are so many suggestions for you so anytime mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. well thank you so much enjoy your evening your day and i hope to see you next month Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Maria. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.